G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder and welcome to the MiG-19. Well, this isn't quite the MiG-19, this is the Chinese variant of the MiG-19, or rather the Chinese copy of the MiG-19, the J6A, but for all intents and purposes they are basically the same. Now, before we actually get into the video, you might be hearing my voice and saying, hey, that sounds a little bit different, and that's because I've got myself a new mic. This mic is the SM7B, it's extremely expensive, but hopefully you will see a nice jump in quality. Also, just with recent events going around, I would like to just, just make a reminder to everyone to question what you see on the internet. Don't always take it to be true, and make sure that you do some uh, research before you make any assumptions. Uh, just keep an eye out, because the propaganda machines on both sides are very, very strong, fully fledged, and state operated. So just be mindful in that situation. Now, back to the plane. The MiG-19 was first introduced as one of the first supersonic planes in the game, and it has basically remained as a bit of a fixture in War Thunder due to a couple of interesting properties this plane has. First of all, it's a very good plane at two different speeds. Most planes will have a sort of range that they're good at, and uh, this plane kind of has two. You've got uh, sort of sub 600, I would say between 400 and uh, 600 or 700 kilometers per hour, and 1,000 kilometers per hour and uh, between sort of a thousand and maybe 1100 uh, and beyond those ranges or outside those ranges you'll find your maneuverability tends to taper off a little bit and so one of the interesting things that you can do with this plane is you can sort of fight in two different modes you can either pick like a sort of rapid or a faster mode where you're definitely at a higher speed almost all the time or you can drop all the way down to those lower speeds and sort of do some low speed dogfights. And this is handy with this particular tier because you do still need to stay fast. You are sort of delving into the area where some of your opponents are gonna be carrying things like R60s or uh, Matra Magics, um, all those very high powered missiles, A9Js on things like the F1. You're gonna be coming up against those types of uh, missiles. And so you need to stay fast. And this thing has another trick up its sleeve to kind of help deflect that sort of stuff. And that's energy retention. The MiG-19 has fantastic energy retention, especially in a climb, and um, even in a turn, this thing is absolutely fantastic. Now, of course, that comes with two trade-offs. So the first trade-off is that you're gonna be a little bit heavier than things like the MiG-17, uh, the Itonda that you can see below me, and so you're not gonna be out-turning them. Um, a lot of the things that you are going to be seeing at this tier, especially in full down tiers, are going to be able to out-turn uh, out you and you are going to struggle with that. There have been plenty of dogfights I've gotten myself into where you just you just can't do anything because they can outturn you and you can pretty much do nothing about it. You just boom and zoom and try and hope for the best. Uh, but in this case here, the Itonda doesn't seem to be paying attention. So I'm gonna try and go for the quick kill. I've noticed that there are enemies coming around so I just need to be careful, throw the afterburner back on. And then I'm gonna go for a boom and zoom kind of maneuver. It looks like the Itonda is still pursuing, so I'm going to hang out in the clouds to prevent him from getting a lock with the AIM-9Bs that he's got, uh, and hopefully I can get myself a juicy little A4 or an F86. Maybe I can get myself uh, both of them. You never know. The A4 here seems to be going into the vertical, and so I'm going to pick the target of opportunity here, and that brings me to my second uh, major, uh, I suppose, major idea about this plane, um, and that's its weapons. You have two NR-30s, and the NR-30s are extremely good, but you have to be very very good with your aim i use 20 shells there and that is about uh what one seventh of my ammunition it's it's a big chunk of my ammunition so there is quite a lot of uh <laughs> quite a lot of uh, mistakes that you can make in this plane and it's very very hard to capitalize if you are not well practiced in this plane um although if you have been playing migs for this amount of time you know this this is a plane that is in very much a mig oriented line where you have low ammunition capacity right from the beginning uh, you go from the mig 9 mig 9 late mig 15 and mig 17 and straight into this thing this thing is going to be basically the same as all of your other migs it's just a sort of evolution which is kind of what i like about the mccoyan designs they kind of evolve off each other up until about the mig 21 where they decide to basically reinvent the wheel i do like it um, they tend to revolve off this sort of energy retention type play style um, and whilst you have very few guns you are able to sort of muscle your opponent into a vulnerable position where you can get some easy kills and this is uh, going to be kill number two for me the a4e early um, these things when they're in abundance are basically just cannon fodder so you do use this opportunity to make your most of these particular planes try and get them as many 
times as you can or try and get them you know when they're vulnerable because these planes do not turn well and so they're the one 8.7 that you can really capitalize on things like the uh, sabers are going to outturn you things like the it on dark can even outturn you you're going to be struggling with those things but a4s they're kind of heavy they're kind of fat i wouldn't be firing missiles i would certainly be using my guns at all opportunity and uh, like i said even though i would consider myself fairly proficient with these guns uh doesn't mean that they're easy to aim it actually far from it now you'll notice that i haven't used any missiles yet and that's because we are equipped with the uh, r3 r r3 s's which are tragic to say the least. They are not good missiles. They should only be used at, uh, I would say, two kilometers or uh, maybe between 1.5 and 2.5 kilometers if your opponent's really, really slow. But these are basically missiles that you would basically just use instead of guns or you would f have to use to force your opponent to turn. Now, uh, I'm going to go for this A4E here. It feels a little bit cheap to go for him just because he's missing a wing, but I don't really want to risk him sort of landing and then coming back and having to deal with whole team i just want him over and done with and so a quick r3r r3s R3 rather uh is the best way to deal with that now that leaves us with one harrier and the harriers can be deadly because if you are after burning and it's super close ranges if they are really really spicy they can just decide to s ram you and depending on your ping you might get unlucky so i would absolutely highly recommend uh, making sure that there are no Harriers within a two kilometer radius of you because then that is certain death. And so I'm going to try and deal with Harriers in any way I can. The first way, seeing that he's slow, I'm just going to use the R3S and that is a very easy done job there with four kills. The MiG-19 really thrives in uh, certain situations that are not sort of hectic clusterfuck dogfights. And that really is to the detriment of the MiG-19. It's not a plane that you can just sort of go in and out of dogfights and just do whatever the hell you want because this is the type of plane that re like really, really specializes on a 1v1. If you are in a 1v1 with a MiG-19, uh, it doesn't matter what plane you're in, you are probably going to lose unless you can you know, jet away from your opponent. There is pretty much a done deal because this plane just has energy retention, climb rate, turn rate that's adequate. Uh, the guns can be deadly when they're in a, the correct circumstances. And of course, you've got missiles, so if you get too slow, then you're pretty much screwed. So the MiG-19 is that 1v1 plane. You can't isolate it in a way that gives you an advantage. You have to basically bully it into submission with multiple aircraft. Or alternatively, stick with teammates so much that the MiG-19 has no choice but to fall into a pattern of uh, multi-engagement situations like 3v3s, 4v4s, because in that situation, that's where the MiG-19 is going to suffer because there's no real way to get the guns on target. If you stay fast enough, it's going to be a really hard shot. The missiles are not going to be adequate. And of course, there's nothing else really that the MiG-19 can do except try and isolate your opponents. But if you're not going to do that, if you're not going to give them that, that little inch, then there's nothing for them. And so creating an opening in the MiG-19 is actually quite difficult. So if you can find openings or if you can find teammates that are really uh, struggling, if they've got one enemy on their six and they're having an issue, say for example, there's an F-105 that's uh, harassing something that doesn't turn well, like a Yak-38, or if you've got a Harrier that's coming up on your uh, friendly A-5, or if there's an F-104 that's really struggling with some sort of subsonic, then absolutely the best thing that you can do is go and help them because that's a free kill for you and of course that saves you from getting into a multi-engagement situation later on in the match and instead being able to turn the tide in the other direction now in uh, this direction coming up against me is an f-105 i'm going to go for a quick burst there and get a nice nice head on there oh man these nr30s when they strike are some of the most potent guns in the entire game if you can learn to aim them you are going to have a very very good time playing this plane uh, it's just sort of the skill that comes with this plane. And of course, it is very, very difficult. And uh, as you can see here, I'm, I'm trying to get some R3R, R3 or R3S shots rather. I keep mixing the two because it's R3R rolls off the tongue so much easier. Um, but the Mirage rolls out of the way of my uh, R3S. And now an F4C and an AV8 pop up. And this is the type of situation that is basically going to get you killed 90% of the time, unless you can deal with it in a way that uh, basically makes it a one versus one. And you're just doing a one versus one and your opponents all seem to like line up like ducks in a row for some reason. 
Now, the F4C decides he wants to abandon me. The Mirage decides that he doesn't want a bar of me either. And so that leaves me with the AV-8. And all it, all it takes is for me to get my guns on. If I can get my guns on properly, then I've pretty much got this guy in the bag because I know I can defeat him in a turn fight. I just need to switch the afterburner off. And this is probably the one plane that I would suggest using air brakes and turning off your afterburners in. Now, the MiG-21 SMT comes and finishes off the enemy plane, but you can see that by the way I was turning, I would very likely have been able to get onto the AV-8A6 and finish him off very, very easily. So this is the type of engagement that you definitely want to be um, situating yourself into. Try and isolate your opponents. Um, I'd just also like to note that this is a marketplace skin for the J6A, which is absolutely stunning. I really, really love it. Um, I actually want to know who made it. If if you know in the comments who made it, where it originated from, um, maybe it's a live.warthunder skin. I, I'm pretty sure you could probably find it there. Um, but of course, if you want to have it and show it off to everyone, marketplace is the way to go. Um, I think that that is a good thing that the marketplace brings to the game. It's not, not entirely bad. It is a cash grab, but you do get to support some of these skinners in the meantime, which, you know, I'm more than happy to do. And of course, if you have any spare event cash, maybe this skin's like three bucks. Uh, I'd pay three bucks for a skin. I'd pay three bucks of my own money. And um, in this case, I paid three bucks of my own time. So, so we're moving on to this J35A. Uh, looks like I can't get a lock on him. It looks like he's going to go underneath. I'm just going to ignore him for now and um, try and uh, carry on in a, in a straight line. If I can keep going, I can continue my speed, continue my energy. Uh, I get a critical hit in a kind of shady head-on. Uh, there's a second head-on that I could possibly take with this Mirage, but I decide against it. The F-105D decides against invading or, or uh, coming up against me. And this Mirage has turned all the way around to get this Yak-28 and has put himself in a vulnerable position. He's cut in underneath me, but that's okay because I have so much energy. I still have 700 or 800 kilometers per hour. I'm going to go into a vertical and you can see how little speed I've bled for such an aggressive maneuver. I've only dumped about a third of my speed or just just uh above a third and below half so it's pretty pretty good at retaining energy and now the mirage because he's made two serious turns he's dropped himself well below 500 kilometers per hour and i'm able to close that gap really really rapidly and um here you can you can just tell i'm used to things like the aim9ds or uh the aim9js because that would have been a kill with any other missile but uh you know r3rs a little bit shonky so we're just gonna we're just gonna roll with the punches it seems now because this Mirage has thrown away so much energy, he's unable to actually keep up with me. You can see that even if he had a missile prepped and ready to go, he would not be able to get his shots onto me. And just as I pop out the flaps, pop out the air brake, throw the afterburner back on as I roll down to pick up more speed to close that distance, the Mirage is in an extremely precarious spot. There is literally nothing he can do. So a quick squeeze of the, the 30 mils and he's pretty much gone. These are the types of engagements that you need to be putting yourself into, where you're either helping out teammates or where you're engaging in a 1v1. And this thing will shine like 90% of the time. There are so many great matches that I've had in this plane that uh, I haven't shown just for brevity's sake because this plane is, is genuinely fun. You just need to sort of close that skill gap. And moving on, we have a J35A from before. That's the one that's managed to get himself back to base. And whilst my teammate here in the MiG-21 is farming AI, the J-35 manages to clean him up, which is a crucial mistake that leaves me in a 1v1. So I have zero problem here because the J-35 turns and burns a lot of speed. It's got a delta wing or, or a double delta wing, I believe. And so once you turn once, you do bleed a lot of speed. And, and the MiG-19, as I have said earlier, energy retention is basically its forte. And so the J-35A is going to pitch up trying to i don't know what the hell he's trying to do he cuts in underneath me but i am still able to just hover over the top of him and even as he's trying to pull back i'm actually able to cut in on the inside because i've just got so much speed built up and so much energy that i'm able to just do whatever the hell i want and that's the mig-19 mig-19 j6a mig-19s they all perform the same damn way these planes are fantastic if you can master the guns, if you can master the little quirks of this plane, like the kind of average roll rate, the strange, you know, gun guns and, and all that sort of stuff, you can really make this plane work. And it is absolutely brilliant. 
But ladies and gentlemen, you guys are also brilliant for watching all the way to the end of the video. If you guys would help me feed the algorithm, that would be awesome. And of course, there are plenty of links below if you would like to support the channel, become a patron. You know, uh, Air Models is a great one as well. And of course, you can buy something through the War Thunder store with a 3% discount using the decal link on the screen as we speak. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for supporting the channel. I'll have more videos coming for you soon. Take care, and I'll catch you next time.